All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, little bit humid, <clears throat> maybe a little tiny bit smoky. It is a Sunday afternoon here in the collapse of everything on this glorious Sunday, August 4th, 2024. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, guys, I have been having this article sitting around for several days, uh, making the rounds right here on the mainstream media about <clears throat> pretty much the collapse of everything. What is it chronicling the collapse of the Amazon rainforest, the AMOC, the Greenland ice sheet, and the Antarctic ice sheet? So here in the mainstream media, many versions of this for the past several days. Here it is on Reddit collapse, basically just talking about the collapse of everything. Uh, and obviously I've been meaning to cover it, but for whatever reason I haven't gotten to it, but so many other doomers have covered it that uh, I, I, I'm not going to be the, uh, you know, late to the doomer party, so I will let you go find that. So since uh, so that was what I was going <coughs> to do today, and then we had last night, so uh, before we get into this article, I'm going to talk about myself. Imagine that, Sam Mitchell talking about himself. So, you know, I moved to the Finger Lakes. I bought this place in 2019 is when I moved to the Finger Lakes of New York, and uh, it, it wasn't the major, well, one of the major reasons that I moved here is because I figured that upstate New York was going to be the last place where I had to deal with wildfires or even wildfire smoke. Well, the joke's a little bit on me, and, and but one of one of the reasons that I that I moved up here is that the this area, the Finger Lakes of New York, and I think Buffalo, New York, hilariously enough always rated real high in, uh, you know, what they call climate havens, I've heard them, and just good places to be when uh, everything goes to hell on this planet. So uh, I came up here and ended up buying Bugs in a Jar Farm, and so I have 14 acres here. I am up at Seahorse up here in the pine trees on the top of the hill. <clears throat> so, so guys, I, you know, I, I take a little bit of the blame here. I mean, it was clear to me that the little house that I bought, the existing house, you, you could see where four feet of water had come through the living room. And I came to find out that this little house has actually been flooded five times before 2019. And so it's not exactly like I, I wasn't warned that the actual little cabin, the, you know, that I bought was in a floodplain, uh, even in the climate haven of uh, the Finger Lakes of New York. There's still such things as floodplains. Um, so I have been, uh, spending a lot of money making flood control improvements. I have flood insurance on the house, which is coming up due in, uh, two weeks, I notice. So last night, what happened is this. So we, we had a full house here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, all three of the tiny houses were were rented. Uh, all three of them were rented. Uh, I was sleeping out in the little trailer out in the out by the road, and uh, so starting in in at at ten thirty last night. If you looked at the weather forecast for Candor, New York, what it showed was a thirty percent chance 
of scattered showers. 30% chance of scattered showers. I think it was saying 0 0.08 inches of possible rain uh, last night. And then all hell broke loose. I, I, I mean, with, 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 with no warning whatsoever. No warning. There, there were no flash flood warnings. Not one mention on the Weather Channel. And it was the single biggest torrential downpour of the entire summer of 2024. I mean, it's, the cloud wasn't even that big. It's like it parked right over the house. And I mean, guys, it dumped for an hour and a half. And of course, here comes, you know, the creek jumped out of its banks and, um, and, and was roaring through. Uh, and and uh, the br I, I have three, one of my three bridges washed out in, in this flash flood. And I, I found my bridge uh, down, by the, down by the road. Uh, so I've, I've got to go figure out how to get that resettled. But th there, there was this raging torrent blocking access to uh, Blue Dragon. You know, I mean, I had a family, a whole, I had two little kids up there. Six-year-old girl, this eight-year-old boy there, they were, had no warning, no clue what, what was happening. They got home from dinner in Ithaca at 9.45 and this thing hit at 10.30. And, uh, and, and, and I was unaware, because I was out in the camper, I was unaware that we were having this flood. I mean, if one of those kids had come down that hill, uh, it, it would have been a lot more than, uh, than that bridge washing away. And, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, I dodged a, a, a serious bullet last night. Uh, th th this is some crazy shit with, with all the rain we've had this summer, nothing like this. This is the first time this summer we've had one of these floods and I'm, and, 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 uh, and, and just no mention of it anywhere. It's like this one valley where I live. I don't even think there was a drop of rain in Candor, New York. And I get up this morning and I'm going, what the fuck happened here? I mean, the furniture all turned over, the bridge gone, uh, my yard art. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to find uh, <laughs> all of my various wading birds, my little alligator. He's gone. Oh, boy. And uh, so anyway, I, I said, okay. Sam, you did a great job of finding a climate haven. And uh, I get up, and this is the story. So I turn on the mainstream media. Uh, you, you guys will be humored to know my brand new computer is, is already dead. I'm sending it back to the, uh, to the uh, guy on eBay. So I go back to my old beater computer and uh, fire up the mainstream media and right here in this outfit, which I like, called The Conversation, we have this, uh, this article written by three, I don't know if they're climatologists or what, from the University of Michigan, uh, titled, Looking for a U.S. climate haven away from disaster risks? Good luck finding one. Yep. <laughs> Southeast Michigan seemed like the perfect climate haven. Uh, this is one unnamed Southeast Michigan resident. Quote, my family has owned my home since the 1960s, even when my dad was a kid and lived there. No floods, no floods, no floods, no floods. Until 2021, close quote. 
That June, a storm dumped more than six inches of rain on the region, overloading stormwater systems and flooding homes. That sense of living through unexpected and unprecedented disasters resonates with more Americans each year. We have found out in our research into the past, present, and future of risk and resilience an analysis of federal disaster declarations for weather-related events puts more data behind the fears. The average number of disaster declarations has skyrocketed since the year 2000 to nearly twice that of the preceding 20-year period as people question how livable the world will be in a warming future, a narrative around climate migration and, quote, climate havens has emerged. You know, I could put climate havens as one of these ain't going to happen terms. You can just automatically read A-G-H whenever you see the word climate haven from here on. These, quote, climate havens are areas touted by researchers, public officials, and city planners as natural refuges from extreme climate conditions. Some climate havens are already welcoming people escaping the effects of climate change elsewhere. Many have affordable housing and legacy infrastructure from their larger populations before the mid-20th century when people began to leave as industries disappeared. And now these people uh, looking for climate havens, uh, strangely enough, are, are tending to head back to some of these cities that were partly abandoned 70 years ago. But they, meaning the Climate havens are not disaster proof or necessarily ready for the changing climate. Some of the most cited havens in research by national organizations and in news media are older cities in the Great Lakes region, upper Midwest, and the Northeast, can you say, in the great state of upstate New York. They include Ann Arbor, Michigan, Duluth, Minnesota, home of Bob Dylan, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Next coming in is Buffalo, New York. Then we see hilariously Burlington, Vermont. Burlington, Vermont and Madison, Wisconsin. Now I don't think it's Burlington, Vermont that's had, what, three, is it two or three 1,000-year flood events in the past month? Uh, anyway, I know in the past year they have about, uh, I'm guessing, since Vermont is not very big, I'm guessing 60 miles from the climate haven of Burlington, Vermont, in towns like St. John's Barry, and places like that, uh, they have had 3,000-year floods in the past year, two in the past three weeks. Anyway, yet each of these cities will likely have to contend with some of the greatest temperature increases in the country in the coming years. Warmer air has a higher capacity to hold water vapor causing more frequent, intense, and longer duration storms and, uh, you know, absolutely sweltering uh, yesterday during the day building up to that storm last night. You know, th this has been the hottest, most sweltering summer I have ever had in New York. Uh, so... Gee, what a surprise. Warmer air has a higher capacity to hold water vapor, causing more frequent, intense, and longer duration storms. Do you think so? 
these cities, you know, including Buffalo, New York, and Burlington, Vermont, are already feeling the impact of climate change. In 2023 alone, Haven regions in Wisconsin, Vermont, and Michigan suffered significant damage from powerful storms and flooding. I uh, can you say Vermont? The previous winter was also catastrophic. Lake effect snow fueled by moisture from the still open water of Lake Erie dumped over four feet of snow on Buffalo, leaving nearly 50 people dead and thousands of households without power or heat. Duluth reached near record snowfall then and faced significant flooding as unseasonably high temperatures caused rapid snowmelt in April. Heavy rainfall and extreme winter storms can have wide can cause widespread damage to the energy grid, which we've certainly found that out uh, this year. I am uh, powering my computer on our on our 2,000 watt backup generator. This is the Blue Eddy uh, EB200P 2,048 watt generator. That's what this computer is uh, living off of right now. Uh, talking about power outages every time it rains here. Uh, <coughs> Heavy rainfall and extreme storms can cause widespread damage to the energy grid and significant flooding and heighten the risk of waterborne disease outbreaks. These effects are particularly notable in legacy Great Lakes cities with aging energy and water infrastructure because older infrastructure was not built for this. Older cities tend to have older infrastructure hmm, that likely was not built to withstand more extreme weather events. They are now scrambling to shore up their systems. Many cities are investing in infrastructure upgrades, but these upgrades tend to be fragmented or not permanent fixes and often lack long-term funding. Typically, they, are, they also are not broad enough to protect entire cities from the effects of climate change and can exacerbate existing vulnerabilities. And of course, this is what we saw earlier this summer in uh, Houston, Texas after a Category 1 hurricane, that little pussy hurricane barrel went through Houston. And have those guys gotten their heat, their, their power back on? I think last I saw from Houston, I think last week they were talking about the death toll from Hurricane Barrel in Houston, Texas. It was up to 36. These are people who essentially died of heat stroke uh, because they had no electricity to run even a fan, much less an air conditioner. Uh, but of course, Houston, Texas is not a climate haven. It is a climate hellhole, uh, as if Hurricane Harvey, what was Harvey? few years ago, what was that, 46 inches of rain, 46 inches of rain in two days, what is that, an inch an hour for two solid days, good lord, and people still pouring into Houston, <clears throat> electricity grids <clears throat> are extremely vulnerable to the mounting effects of severe thunderstorms and winter storms on power lines. 
I have been uh, literally chronicling uh, this collapse right here on my own street. You know, when when we were uh, out of power for a little over a day a few weeks ago, what it was was one of these dead ash trees falling on the power lines. <clears throat> I can go up and down my street right now. I can go up and down the streets all over the climate haven of the Finger Lakes of New York. I, I could probably find 500 dead trees that are ready to come crashing down on, uh, on, on power lines. Uh, you know, I did this chronicle about all these dead trees, uh, you know, falling on people's houses. But, uh, you know, I, I bet there, I, I bet in the Finger Lakes of New York alone, uh, I, I bet there's at least, at least right now, 10,000 trees that could fall on power lines. And uh, that, that was one tree falling on the power line that feeds this road and uh, put, knocked us out for 24 hours. Uh, I had to go get my water from the Amish guys because my well is, is, is an electric well. And anyway, getting back to the story, I'm as you, you, you know, you that it's just getting to the point more and more when you're reading the mainstream media, you can uh, you can say, yeah, it's happening right outside my window. <clears throat> Vermont and Michigan are ranked number 45 and 46 among the states, respectively in electricity reliability, which incorporates the frequency of outages and the time it takes utilities to restore power. There you go. And let's, don't forget, storm water systems. Storm water systems and the Great Lakes region also regularly fail to keep pace with the heavy rainfall and rapid snow melt. So what I am doing, guys, here, the, the reason that uh, my house is flooded one to five times is because of a storm water failure just downstream from my house. And so what I have done, the reason the creek jumped the banks last night okay, and, and siphoned all that water off uh, and carried my bridge away is because I purposely have uh, been spending years and thousands of dollars because I want the creek to do that. It did exactly what it was supposed to do last night because I'm trying to avoid the potential storm water runoff failure just downstream from my house. I, I am virtually 100% sure that I have saved my house from flooding because uh, of this work that I've been doing. But as I say, it's uh, thousands of dollars I've spent out of my pocket and, and, and four years of work. And uh, now I've created this new problem. Anyway, you fix one problem and, and you create uh, and you create another one. Anyway, storm water systems in the Great Lakes and you know next to that the Finger Lakes region also regularly fail to keep pace with the heavy rainfall and rapid snow melt caused by climate change. Storm water systems are routinely designed in accordance with precipitation analyses from NOAA, blah, 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 which do not account, account for climate change. A new version of that will not be available, available until 2026 at the earliest. 
at the confluence of these infrastructure challenges is more frequent and extensive urban flooding in and around, quote, haven cities. An analysis by the First Street Foundation, which does incorporate future climate projections into precipitation modeling, reveals that five, five of these six haven cities face moderate or major flood risk. Disaster declaration data shows that the counties housing these six cities have experienced an average of six declarations for severe storms and flooding since the year 2000, about one every 3.9 years, and these are on the rise. Intensified precipitation can further stress stormwater infrastructure, resulting in basement flooding, contamination of drinking water sources in cities with legacy sewer systems, and hazardous road and highway flooding. Transportation systems are also contending with hotter temperatures and pavement not designed for extreme heat. As these trends ramp up, cities everywhere will also have to pay attention to systemic inequalities and vulnerability that often fall along lines of race, race wealth, and mobility. Can you say Houston, Texas? Urban heat island effects, energy insecurity, and heightened flood risk are just a few of the issues intensified by climate change that tend to hit poor residents harder. And then after all of that, of course, they have to uh, end on the hopium, uh, but I guess I can save the end of the article for my ain't gonna happen roundup rant, uh, you know, just grabbing at straws. Uh, not, 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 not a damn thing you, they're, they're going to do about this. Uh, the bottom line, cities will have to remain vigilant about reducing emissions hmm, that contribute to climate change and at the same time prepare for the climate risks creeping toward even the climate havens of the globe. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, and of course, it's just talking about the cities. This, this was just looking at those six cities. You know, if you're like me and uh, most of the doomers I know that have, you know, carved out their little doomsteads. Uh, up here in New York and elsewhere, uh, we, we, we're out of here in the middle of nowhere, and uh, we are the last people uh, that get brought back onto line when things go out. So anyway, uh, that is today's chronicle of the collapse on this spectacularly gorgeous Sunday afternoon up here in the pines and uh, I'm gonna get out there and enjoy the remains of this gorgeous afternoon while I still can. What do you think little dog? Are you enjoying the remains of this gorgeous afternoon before the uh, looks like more storms rolling in tomorrow I guess uh, Florida I guess all of my real estate in Florida is probably going underwater tonight and tomorrow. Being a Florida real estate investor like I am. And uh, I haven't heard yet, but I'm assuming Debbie is heading this way. Get out there and enjoy the beautiful climate haven that you have found 
while you still can. Bye, guys.